Hi guys, I'm Smitha and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things machine learning and AI related. Today is day three of the 100 days of ML challenge that I've started. If you guys don't know what that is or if you're just brand new to my channel, check out day zero, which I'll be leaving in the description box below as that will help guide you in this challenge. With that being said, let's get into it. Today we are going to be looking at the quiz that I gave you in the last uh, video and some of the answers as well as deep diving into what is linear regression and how to go about it. We'll end off with a very simple coding example which I'm sure a lot of you guys will be able to follow along. So let's get started. So in the last video, we talked about machine learning terminology, such as features and labels, what is supervised learning, what is classification, what is regression, etc. And we ended off with this quiz, which now let's actually look at it. So it was, suppose an online store wants to create a supervised ML model that will provide personalized shoe recommendations to users. That is, the model will recommend certain pairs of shoes to Marty and different pairs of shoes to Janet. The system will use past user uh, behavior data to generate training data. Which of the following statements are true? Uh, before I actually reveal the answers, let's look at some of the answers that you guys left because a lot of you commented with answers of your own. So Akansha says, uh, shoe size is a useful feature because it will help in recommending shoes which are available in the user sizes. And I think that's a really good answer. That's definitely true. Uh, the other thing she also says is that shoes that a user adores is a useful label because it would be useful to predict what shoes users would adore. Uh, Akansha, that's actually a pretty interesting answer. One thing that I would like to ask you is, how would you measure something like adoration? So shoes that a user adores, it's a really hard metric to measure because it's hard to measure adoration. It's hard to measure how much you like something. So that's actually pretty hard to measure. Uh, let's look at another answer by Suraj Krishnamurthy. Uh, Su Suraj says, shoe size is a useful feature and the user clicked on the shoes description is a useful label. The others are too subjective. And thank you for your videos. Uh, thank you for your comments, Suraj. So let's actually look at the answers. A lot of you guys all agree that shoe size is definitely a useful feature. And that's definitely true. What about the user clicked on the shoes description is a useful feature. That is also true. Users probably only want to read more about those shoes that they like. Clicks by user is therefore an observable, quantifiable metric. So the keywords here is observable and quantifiable. So like these other features such as shoes that a user adores and shoe beauty, these features are not exactly quantifiable and easy to measure. So these features are actually really difficult to measure and it's probably not that useful of a label. So guys, in the last video, we talked about linear regression and I gave you an example of a recruiter who is trying to determine the salary of new employees by looking at past data of existing employees and their salaries. And the only variable that we were looking at were number of years of experience. So let's actually see how we can solve a really simple problem like this. And since the recruiter is only looking at one variable, which is number of years of experience, the equation for this linear regression problem is very simple. It is going to look like this y equals to mx plus c. And we've seen this many times before. It's an equation of a straight line. Now let's look at the data that this recruiter has. She has a lot of data of tons of different employees and their salaries. And we notice that if, a, if an employee has zero years of experience, so when they're starting out, they're offered a salary of $50,000. If an employee has one year of experience, they have a salary of $60,000. So as you notice, it's just a $10,000 increment for every year of experience that you have. In order to find this equation, we have to solve for the value of M and we have to solve for the value of C. Let's to do that, let's actually look at a much smaller data set from our original one. Let's just look at three points. Okay, so the first data point that we should be looking at, which has very key information, 
is that if you have zero years of experience, your salary is $50,000. I have written the salary as five, uh, five here because this column is in 10,000s. So as I've written here. So what that shows is that your Y intercept when X equals to zero is five. C, which is your Y intercept, is going to be five. Meanwhile, uh, M is your gradient. So in order to find your gradient, what, what your gradient is, you just have to take two points. That gives us M equals to one. So this equation, this very basic equation for this very, very simple data set is Y equals to X plus five. So we can test this. For example, let's say we are looking for an a salary of an employee who has five years of experience. We would put X equals to five. So we would get Y equals to 10, which is equivalent to $100,000, which is exactly what we were expecting. So that is one very simple way of doing linear regression. If you have very easy to deal with data, which doesn't have a lot of uh, anomalies or doesn't have a lot of data points which are really far away and which are really far away from that straight line that you're trying to get. So this is a very simple way that you can use math to solve very easily. Now let's look at the same simple data set. Let's use uh, TensorFlow and let's use Keras in order to solve it on Google Colab. It's going to be much more simple and uh, it's gonna be a very simple problem in general, and I hope you guys are able to follow along. So guys, I've created this Google Colab file called Salary Linear Regression. I'm gonna leave a link for that in the description box below, so you guys can actually do this along with me. So in this exercise, you'll try to build a neural network that predicts the salary of an employee based on their number of years of experience. So imagine if Estimating an employee was as extremely simple. Base pay of 50K for someone with no experience and every additional year of experience gives you an additional 10K. How would you create a neural network that learns this relationship so that it would predict that an employee with eight years of experience uh, should earn $130,000? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna import TensorFlow, NumPy, and also Keras, because these are the three main libraries that we're gonna be making use of. If you're not sure what these are, uh, don't worry, because we're gonna actually go deeper into what each of these are much later on in this challenge. For now, just import it. Know that they are Python libraries. So we're gonna be making use of their functionality, and in order to make use of their functionality, we have to write these import statements in Python. So import TensorFlow as TF. Uh, the only reason we are writing as TF is to make it much more easier because when we use it in our code, in order to use TensorFlow, we don't have to write TensorFlow. We can just write TF in order to use it. So import NumPy as NP, and then from TensorFlow, import Keras. And here is our very, very simple model. Def is uh, definition in Python is a way of writing a function. So salary model and the input for this is y new. So when we're going to be calling this salary model, the input that we'll write in this bracket is going to be the number of years. So once we put that input in, we are expecting to get out the prediction. And here we have defined a very basic data set. The first is the x values, which is years, number of years. And I'll write this here for you guys to understand. Number of years. And then followed by YS, which is the salary. The reason why I'm using 0 0.5 instead of just $50,000 is because by using these small numbers, it's much better for the model and we're gonna get more accurate results instead of using large numbers. So always, whenever you're dealing with even major, big, big numbers, what you would do uh, in any sort of machine learning project is actually that you would normalize the values, usually to make it less than one. But in this case, we are just going to be using 0 0.5 all the way up. So model equals to keras.sequential. 
So we're trying to build a sequential model. Sequential essentially means that the layers are stacked linearly. Uh, it's okay if you don't know what that means. We'll actually, of course, talk about more of these in-depth stuff later on. But anyway, uh, in this particular model, we're only using one layer, so it doesn't really matter. And we're making a use of a dense layer of input shape one. Essentially, by calling the Keras library, we are making use of its deep learning uh, model functionality. And right after that, we're going to call model.compile. And in this function, we will be listing what sort of optimizer functions we want to use and also what sort of loss functions we want to use. So we're using SGD for optimizer. There are many, many different optimizers available, which once we actually delve into deep learning, we will cover those. SGD is a very popular optimizer uh, to use. And also there's a lot of different loss functions as well. Mean squared error is one of the most basic loss functions. In model.fit, you define what are your inputs, what are your outputs, and how many epochs you would like for this model. And epochs is essentially how many times it's going to, this model is actually going to run over your data. How many times is it going to train over your data? And in this, we have picked 500 epochs. You guys can pick a much lesser one depending on how much time you want to spend training this model. And lastly, we have a return function because obviously our model needs to return what value it has predicted. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the first uh, box of code with the import functions and then also the second box of code with our model definition. Next up is our prediction. So as I was saying, we want to predict what is going to be the salary of an, of an employee with eight years of experience. So we put in the value eight and we call our definition that we, create, we created earlier, salary underscore model. So prediction equals to salary underscore model. And this is when our model is actually going to run and train on all of that data that we have entered in the previous block. It's pretty fast because we don't have a very large data set. If we had a very large data set, each epoch would take a much longer time. So obviously you can imagine that 500 epochs is going to take a tremendously large amount of time. And lastly, let's go ahead and print our prediction. So our model has predicted that if your employee has eight years of experience, you should be paying your employee $133,000. Now you might be wondering, well, this, this, why didn't it predict $130,000? Because with our basic equation that we came up earlier, we could have predicted better. But obviously, this is a deep learning model. It's going to be predicting based on learning. So this model that we've created is very useful for data sets which are not perfect like the one we have. So feel free to actually play around, add your own type of data which doesn't fit this pattern of uh, you know, the perfect pattern of like y equals to x plus 5. So feel free to add more data and run this and try to understand what type of uh, predictions you're getting out. So that's it for today's video, guys. Be sure to check out the description box for all the links. And as many of you guys have requested, I've also created a Discord channel. The link for the Discord channel will be in the description box as well, and also the homework for this video. So be sure to check out the homework, and this is gonna be really a supplementary material which will help you guys in understanding uh, machine learning much better, and also understanding what is going on in each video much better as well. Thank you guys for watching, and see you in the next video.